Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Sony ECM B10 shotgun microphone. And before I go any further, all of the sound that you're hearing in this review was recorded with the microphone. And just for reference right now, I have it connected to my old Sony A6400 camera, which is the one I use for most of my pieces to camera and also filming B-roll in my reviews. The microphone is mounted to the multi interface shoe. It's an analog connection because this camera does not have the digital pins and the recording levels are set to auto. And I'm going to explain what all of that means throughout this review. Announced in June 2022 and costing around 249 US dollars, the B10 is a simpler, smaller and more affordable version of the original ECM B1M microphone that was launched about three years ago and that's still available for about $349. Now, as you'll discover, both microphones actually share a great deal in common, but the biggest difference between them is the older B1M employs eight capsules compared to four on the new B10. And that is what allows the B10 to come in $100 cheaper and also allows it to be smaller and a little bit lighter. Okay, this is a change of scene and a change of camera. I'm now filming outdoors with the Sony A7 Mark IV with the microphone connected and still in its analog mode with auto levels, but I switched to its omnidirectional mode, so it should be picking up sound from all around. But the first thing I'm gonna do is switch it to the digital mode. Okay, so the only change that I've made now is switching from an analog to a digital connection. And in order to do that, you're gonna need one of the more recent Sony cameras. Again, I'm filming this on the Sony A7 Mark IV, well, you also find that digital connection on models like the A7R Mark IV, the Alpha 1, the A7S Mark III, most of the recent models. But it's very important to note that this microphone will work when connected to any Sony camera so long as it has that multi-interface shoe. It's going to be an analog connection on the older models, but on the newer ones you have the choice of an analog or, as you're hearing now, a digital connection. Let's switch it into something a bit more directional. Okay, so I've switched the microphone to its middle pattern. It's got three different ones that I'm going to demonstrate to you. Now this one is still going to capture some ambient sound, but rather than doing 360 degrees all around the camera, it is concentrating on a 180 degree area right in front of the camera. So it should be hearing me, but also those things that you can see on the frame. Okay, now I've switched to the third of the microphone's patterns. This is it in its super directional shotgun mode. So it should now be very much concentrated on the sound coming from directly in front, which of course is ideal if you're presenting a piece to camera. I'm going to keep it on this mode for a little bit in order to talk a bit more about how the microphone works in general. So as you probably already guessed from the B-roll that I've been showing you so far, the ECM B10, like its predecessor, is designed to only mount on cameras with Sony's multi-interface shoe, whether the older analog version or the newer digital version. This means it is not compatible with non-Sony cameras, or indeed any Sony cameras that don't have the multi-interface shoe, but this does at least allow it to work with some pretty older models, including my A6400, which I showed you earlier. Now, incompatibility with other camera brands is the major disadvantage of this microphone if you're carrying multiple systems, but there are a number of key benefits to using a hot shoe, accessory shoe based microphone solution. The first is that there's no wires to worry about. If you were using an analog microphone, you typically have a three and a half millimeter jack and cable going between the microphone and the camera and this is something that could break it's something that you could lose by connecting through the accessory shoe you eliminate the need for any cables and that of course also makes it neater and it doesn't block the screen uh, if you have a model where it flips out to the side one of the other benefits of using an accessory shoe based microphone is that it's powered by the camera's battery itself so there's no need for you to remember to bring batteries or to charge a microphone beforehand of course it's going to draw some more power from the camera itself that battery is not going to be lasting as long as it would without the microphone but it does mean that you don't need to worry about powering a separate device like the ECM B1M before it, the B10 also supports a couple of cunning digital processing tricks. And you're hearing the first of them now. This is with the microphone in its noise cancelling mode, where it should be getting rid of some of that ambient surrounding. Now, typically when you are doing digital noise reduction, you can sometimes get a bit of a warbly 
effect in the background. Sometimes it sounds like you're recording in maybe a bathroom or a toilet, which isn't ideal. And um, like its predecessor, your mileage will vary depending very much on your surroundings. So give it a shot, but I wouldn't say you should rely on it. And just as an immediate side-by-side -side before I move on to my next location, this is the microphone without that noise-canceling DSP applied. So this is it just running in its directional shotgun mode. Auto levels on the A74 and a digital audio connection too. Right, I think it's time to move on, don't you? So from the shaded interior of Brighton Railway Station to the beach, the front, which as always is somewhat breezy, so this is going to be a good test for the wind muffler that is supplied rather generously with the ECM B10 microphone. Remember it is often an optional accessory with some other microphones, especially those by Rode. And speaking of Rode, the thing, one of the first things I noticed when using the B10 microphone was its size. I mean, it really is very, very small, not quite as small as say a Rode Video Micro, but considerably smaller than the Video Mic Go 2, which itself is considered a fairly compact microphone. So now I've switched to the second of those three patterns. This is the middle position. So it's not as focused as it can be, but it is at least now rejecting most of the sound from behind the camera, and it is focusing on the sound in the front. So you're also gonna hear the sea behind me and some of that ambient sound around it. But as I'm presenting a piece to camera, I'm gonna go for the super directional option. This is it operating as a shotgun, hopefully only capturing sound right in front of it and rejecting sound uh, to the sides and of course behind. So I'm going to stick with this for a moment while I discuss what the microphone is like to actually use and set up. And even though it does have quite a number of controls on the back of it, it is in fact a very, very simple microphone to use. The first thing to note is that regardless of the Sony camera that you have it mounted on, old, new, analog or digital multi-interface shoe, the microphone is the thing that takes control of your audio levels. So when you go into the actual audio levels menu on your camera, you'll notice that it is grayed out. So you will not be able to adjust the levels within the camera, they're only done on the microphone. And there are two options, again, whether you're using an analog or digital connection, those two options are either auto, where the microphone works out the levels, and that in itself is quite a nice update for the Sony cameras, because of course, there is no auto option in the menus. So you can either choose auto, which is what I've been using so far in this video, or you can choose manual. And when it's set to manual, you use the dial on the back of the microphone to set those recording levels. As you've already seen or perhaps heard earlier in the video, there are a couple of DSP, digital signal processing tricks that you can perform to the sound. At the moment, I've got them disabled, but let's see what they do. Okay, so I've set the processing switch on the back of the microphone to NC or noise cancelling and what that does is attempt to reduce a kind of constant noise that is in the background of your clips. It could be an air conditioning unit, the sound of a car or a train or an aeroplane or maybe even uh, that kind of constant rumble of the sea or even the uh, wind noise around you. And as you heard earlier when I demonstrated it, in Brighton Railway Station, it can work with varying degrees of success. Sometimes it's eerily good, sometimes it's eerily bad. So as before, I'd recommend that if you are recording a piece to camera, do two versions, one with noise cancelling enabled and one with it disabled, just in case it spoils that clip for you. But that's not the only effect it can do. Okay, so I've now gone for the second of those two filter effects. This is LC or low cut, which simply cuts out those very, very low frequencies that can kind of rumbling sound that you often get from wind or other ambient sounds around you. And for comparison, now back with the filter effect disabled. And at the beginning of this video, I said that all of the sound you were gonna hear would be recorded with the Sony shotgun mic, but I wanna take this opportunity to make a very quick comparison with an analog microphone. So let's switch to that right now. Right, so I've now switched to the Rode Video Mic Go 2, which is a considerably cheaper microphone. This is only a $99 mic. So it's two and a half times cheaper than the Sony. But immediately there is a considerable difference in terms of the ease and speed with which you can set this microphone up. First of all, I had to connect the analog cable to the door on the side of the camera. And of course, open that door and make sure it didn't block anything. And the second thing I had to do was set those recording levels because it is an analog mic. And those recording levels are controlled as you would expect from within the camera. Now, because it is very breezy, I've got the optional 
um, dead cat fluffy accessory attached to the Rode microphone. But the most obvious thing about it is how big it is. I mean, not only is the microphone itself larger than the Sony mic, but the wind muffler is that much bigger too. And this in turn makes it much less discreet to film with. I found that if you want to really alert the fun police to when you're filming, there's nothing does it more effectively than a big microphone with a big wind muffler on the, on the top, even more so than using a tripod. As soon as you put that big microphone and muffler on top of your camera, someone is going to come along and tell you to clear off and stop filming for no apparent reason other than that they're bored and they haven't got anything else to do. So that is one of the big advantages that I see with the Sony solution is that it's smaller, it's more discreet, and it's also quicker to set up so you can get in, grab your shot, and get back out again. Anyway, this review isn't about the Rode microphone, although I do have one if you're interested, so I'm going to change locations and switch back to the Sony. I've moved into a vlogging environment, handheld, because that's how a lot of people are going to be using this microphone. I've got it mounted on the A7 Mark IV with a digital hot shoe connection through the multi-interface shoe and with the omnidirectional pattern, so it should be picking up sound from all around. All those lovely ambient bird sounds around me, although also unfortunately a road which is just over there. You may hear some vehicles going past. But hey, it is all part of the ambient surroundings, right? So I'm just going to continue walking for a little so you can hear more of how this sounds. Now, what this omnidirectional pattern also lets you do is record audio from all directions, not just in front, but also behind the camera. So I'm just going to turn it around and see how effective that is. So let's start off. Here is the microphone and camera turned 90 degrees away from me. So you're not going to be looking at me. This may be an improvement, but I'm side on to the microphone. And now I'm going to turn the camera and mic completely away from me. So I'm now behind the camera and uh, with the microphone pointing away from me, but hopefully you may still be able to hear some of that. Turn it another 90 degrees around because of course the reason that you might be behind the camera is in an interview situation or perhaps you're filming some b-roll and you want to be able to actually hear yourself uh, narrating it really or talking about the thing that's in front of the camera when you're behind it. So that's how it sounds in the omnidirectional mode. Now I've got the microphone set to its second pattern. So this is picking up sound from in front of the camera in a 180 degree angle uh, and it should be rejecting quite a lot of the sound from behind it. So let's turn it around again while I keep talking and uh, hear how that sounds. Also check out the ambient surroundings as well. So turning in the camera 90 degrees to the side so it is pointing 90 degrees away from me and now if I turn the camera around here it is pointing completely away from me. So the microphone and camera are pointing in the opposite direction. Hopefully I've become quite quiet. And I'm now turning it around to 90 degrees and finally to face me once more. So that was how the microphone sounds when it is in its central middle position. Okay, now I'm in the shotgun mode. This should be pretty directional, pretty much focused on the front alone. So that when I turn the camera to the side, I should already begin to sound much quieter than before and when I turn it completely away from me I'm now directly behind the camera and hopefully you shouldn't be able to hear me much at all. Turning it around another 90 degrees and now back to face me. So here's how it sounds in that directional mode with the camera and microphone pointing directly at me. So let's continue and go for a bit of a wander and a wrap up. Now in this vlogging environment, I can uh, see the screen facing me. And one of the interesting things about using the microphone with a digital connection on the multi-interface shoe is that it actually tells you what kind of audio it's transferring. The screen is saying 48 kilohertz, that's the sampling rate, 16 bit, that's the dynamic range, and two channel. Uh, if you set it to the analog mode, either on a new or old camera, you won't get that information. Okay, let's wrap up by having a little bit of a walk and talk using the microphone in its directional shotgun mode here. And I'm, just as a quick note, I'm using a Sony 20mm 1.8 lens with active steady shot, which should hopefully be delivering a reasonably steady image. And speaking of steadiness, um, this Sony microphone is mounted on a slightly spring-loaded mechanism, so it is absorbing some shock of the bounce that I'm doing here. I am walking fairly slowly, so it shouldn't be too bad. But it is going to be less of a, an anti-shock effect than you would get with a traditional analog microphone. Because of course, if that microphone is connected with just a simple cable, you have the opportunity to mount it on quite a substantial spring-loaded system. 
At this point, it's also worth mentioning that one of the benefits of an analog microphone is the ability to use a cheaply and widely available cable in order to mount it off shoe. You know, if you want to position that shotgun closer to you, as many YouTubers do with it slightly out of camera, that is going to be tricky to do with one of their multi-interface shoe options. Now, there are multi multi-interface shoe extension cables. There is one that Sony supplies with its XLR microphone accessory, but as far as I know, I don't think they're available separately or in the kind of lens that you ideally want, you know, something like, say, a meter. If you are aware of an accessory that will do it, let me know, but if not, that is something that you should bear in mind. This is a microphone that will probably spend its entire life mounted to your camera. Another limitation of this microphone is that it does not support a USB connection, at least not for audio. So you're not going to be connecting this directly to your computer in order to do any kind of Zoom calls or team meetings. Although, of course, if it is connected to your camera and the camera is connected to your computer, then go ahead and knock yourself out. Now, eagle-eyed uh, Sony fans may notice a flap on the side of uh, the microphone behind which is a micro USB port. Can that be used for audio? No, sadly not. I tried it. It is, as far as I know, only used for firmware updates. So again, this microphone is only designed to be used on a multi-interface shoe. To just fit on there, be pretty small and discreet, be very simple to set up, and very easy to operate. I mean, this is something you just stick on and forget about. There's no setup involved. It's just really, really simple. So even though it doesn't work with other camera brands, and even though you may struggle to mount it off camera or off shoe, I do think that if you are wedded to the Sony system and you're after a nice, simple microphone solution, then the ECM B10 could be it. It's not cheap at $250, but it does have that flexibility of being able to work as both a shotgun directional microphone and something that is much more ambient and picking up those surroundings. Right, and that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you have thought of the sound and Sony's approach to using this multi-interface shoe. Of course, it's also something that Canon has started to do with its latest mirrorless cameras. So maybe we'll see accessories like this for that system too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.